Hi, Titi Lope Fadari is back on your airwave. Hmm. He's not a banker. Oh. He had a moving bank in his cap. Now he has earned himself the title cap banker. <laughs> Even Flutter Wave will be given a run for its money. This was the verdict of the Federal Capital Territory High Court this week, which found Farouk Lawan, a former federal lawmaker of the People's Democratic Party, guilty of receiving a bribe of, wait for it, $500,000. As the chairman of the defunct House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee investigating the fraud on fuel subsidy regime in 2012, the court found him guilty of requesting $3 million from businessman Femi Otedola so that the billionaire Zenon oil and gas firm could be removed from the list of companies indicted for fuel subsidy fraud. Seven years is what now separates him from freedom after he was sentenced to Kuji prison for taking bribes, Justice Angela Otaluka wrote. Mr. Lawan note, he is not the same as the Senate President. He took the bribe at the time he was eyeing the gubernatorial seat in Kano State in 2015. Unfortunately for him, that was never to be. But the eventual man who won the election, Abdullahi Ganduji, too, was seen on camera stuffing wads of dollars, this time not in his carpool but in his babariga. What is it about Kano governors and being filmed collecting bribes in dollars and safekeeping them in their clothing? Hmm. Maybe academic researchers would consider the topic as a paper. Let's move to Cross River State. The state governor Ben Ayade, alongside some of his supporters, had just become a political born again after he crossed to the ruling All Progressive Congress. The state may be among the bottom four states with the lowest revenue in the first half of last year and it might have the fifth worst unemployment rate in the country, but that hasn't stopped the APC in the state from ordering 3 million bunches of brooms. <laughs> to sweep the entire state or to cast some demons of bad governance from the state or what is it exactly for? No, it's not clear. But local broom makers must be licking their lips now for the boom in the demands for the item. The party said because of the mass defection, broom, which is APC's symbol, had suddenly become scarce in the state. So by ordering 3 million bunches of brooms from local suppliers, the scarcity can be addressed and local demands can be met. That food is scarce and jobs are scarce in the state it does not concern the party that calls itself progressive role, but broom is more important to them and 3 million is the number needed even though Cross River State has about 3.7 million people. <laughs> Brilliant initiative by the APC. One person to one broom. It will go around, definitely. Just maybe to provide jobs for the jobless masses too. Like Ayade, a senator from Delta State, Peter Wambaoshi has moved to where he seems to be forgiven the All Progressive Congress as former chairman Adams Oshomele once told us. Mr. Wambaoshi, who was accused by the Niger Delta Development Commission of using 11 companies as fronts to secure for himself a 3.6 billion naira contract, has joined Nigeria's ruling party with a presidential welcome. President Muhammadu Buhari welcomed him saying, you are welcome to the progressives family. The administration of the interventionist agency, NDDC, has for years been enmeshed in corruption allegations and Owa Baoshi has been one of those fingered for the corruption in the agency. Mr. Owa Baoshi heads the Senate's committee on Niger Delta. At a public hearing on NDDC last year, the minister of Niger Delta, Godswill Akwabio, also accused federal lawmakers of corruption and poor job delivery in the NDDC, adding that most of the commission's contracts were executed by the lawmakers. Are you following this? So the allegations led the president to order a forensic audit whose report is due for submission in July. 
with his allegation dangling around Mr. Wambaoshi's neck like an Olympic medal now that he has joined the APC. Will he be cleared of the allegations or will he get a pat on the back and told to see no more? Well, early indications suggest the latter, but let's give the Buaris government some benefit of doubt and see if they will speak in the language justice understands. It rained the other day at the main lobby of Nigeria's legislative headquarters, which nearly became a fish pond, only that some officials quickly mopped the water before it got out of hand. A leak from the roof of the legislative complex between both chambers of the National Assembly had water dripping into parts of the building. The incident caught Nigerians wondering how such fortified building got that bad. Despite the allocations for its maintenance over the years, amounting to billions of naira, the latest being 37 billion naira approved by President Muhammad Buhari in 2019. Senate President Ahmed Lawan said the leakage is an evidence to show why the National Assembly needs funds to fix some of its dilapidated parts. The Federal Capital Development Authority, under whose charge the maintenance of the complex, said the leakage was due to the blockage of the drainages. They said the contract for the renovation was still at procurement level. Thus, two years after the controversial 37 billion naira was signed into law by the president. As always, this edition was written by Yusuf Akinpelu. I am still okay for See you next week. And do not forget, if you like this podcast, please, please, please share and favorite. 